just prior to the subsolar point on the south side and the floor of it. Uh, in the evening, so there is one dark hole. Oh, my God, look at that picture over there. There's the earth coming up. Wow, is that pretty? Earth, our home planet is the only place in the known universe confirmed to host life. We humans are creating a deep scar on Earth's natural ecosystems by exploiting all the possible resources. Nature is declining globally at the rates unprecedented in human history. And, we are in the midst of sixth mass extinction. But this one is not driven by a catastrophic natural event, but by humans. Through this video series we are trying to bring you the importance of biodiversity and what we must preserve to ensure balance in natural ecosystem. Save our planet. Now. Or never. Biodiversity is the world's greatest capital, and this is the basis of our existence. About 3.8 billion years ago in Earth oceans, primitive life exits in the form of microbial organisms. Then over time, the planet's physical and chemical properties, along with the forces of natural selection, miraculously crafted more complex organisms which includes microbes, plants, and animals, thereby the life on Earth existed in harmony. Around 10,000 years ago, during the beginning of Holocene era or human era, where humans transitioned from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to agriculture and fixed settlements, the world around them was full of life. But during the past 500 years, due to the rapid increase in human population, we have altered more than 75% of the world's ice-free land. Over half of the planet's habitable surface is now used to produce food, with wild lands constituting less than 25% of Earth. Due to this massive unjustified destruction, in the last 100 years, rate of extinction is estimated to be around 1,000 species per year. From 1970, on an average, humanity has wiped out 68% of amphibians, mammals, birds, fish, and reptiles, that was an essential part of our natural balance. If there was a 68% decline in the human population, that would be equivalent to emptying North and South America, Africa, Europe, China and Oceania. That is the scale of what we humans have done. Similarly, if you look into the fresh water creatures, their population size is plummeted by 84%. Now we are totally out of balance with the nature. And, it is the time for us to stand together and understand. What, we must preserve. To get back our nature and vibrant ecosystems, thereby both people and wildlife thrive. Every living and non-living things are connected each other and it has its own, importance in maintain a dynamic equilibrium in nature. Let us try to connect few of them and understand how we can maintain the stability of nature by preserving them. Let us start with cryosphere. Most of them are not aware about this term. What is cryosphere? The cryosphere includes places on Earth that are so cold, that water is frozen solid. It includes sea ice, snow and ice on land, glaciers, permafrost, and ice caps. The components of the cryosphere helps to control the planet's temperature by reflecting sun's energy back into space and helping to regulate Earth's temperature. 
It also controls global sea level, ocean currents and storm patterns around the world. As per the data that NASA captured over the past few decades, Arctic is the place where the biggest loss in sea ice is occurring. By now, not only has this trend toward lesser ice continued, but it's even accelerated so that now the decreases are greater than what they had been. As the ice thins and melts, darker surfaces on the Earth will get exposed and absorb more energy from sun and this leads to more warming and even more melting. For most people, these processes are happening so far away that's hard to imagine how melting at the poles even occurs. Let's lay some groundwork. In a balanced system, a healthy glacier is one that accumulates the same amount of snowfall and it loses. Unfortunately, today's glaciers and ice sheets are not in balance. Here's what that actually looks like. In Greenland, when warm summer air melts the surface of a glacier, the meltwater drills holes down through the ice. It makes its way down to the bottom of the glacier where it runs between the ice and the bedrock, and eventually shoots out in a plume at the base of the glacier. The meltwater plume is lighter because it doesn't contain salt and it contains freshwater. It rises toward the surface, mixing warm, salty ocean water upward in the process. The warm water then rubs up against the bottom of the glacier, causing even more of the glacier to melt. This often leads to calving, where ice cracks and breaks off into large icebergs. In addition to melting caused by warm air and a warm ocean, Antarctica faces another challenge as the bedrock itself. Researchers often split Antarctica into two regions, east and west. Unlike East Antarctica, the bedrock that makes up West Antarctica is below sea level, which means it's actually underwater. Warmer water has an easier time seeping in between the continental shelf and the ice sheet, melting the ice from below. This causes the ice shelves to thin and break off into the ocean. This drastic melting of ice sheets would collapse the Earth's oceanic ecosystem and carbon cycle. Until few years ago the Antarctic seas were extremely productive because of microscopic plants called phytoplankton. They grow abundantly in the edge of sea ice and are considered as the foundation of the marine food chain. They consume carbon dioxide on a scale equivalent to forests and other land plants. With right mix of nutrients, sunlight, and water temperatures, phytoplankton can explode into blooms. When present in high concentrations in the water, the chlorophyll in their bodies gives the water a greenish color, large enough to be visible even from space. Antarctic krill, a shrimp-like crustaceans, consume this phytoplankton and multiply to astounding levels which in turn are eaten by Adelie penguins, seabirds, seals, whales, and other animals. Krill is the key species in the Antarctic ecosystem. In each year, krill can indirectly remove up to 12 billion tons of carbon from Earth's atmosphere. However the melting of perennial snow and ice covers has resulted significant changes over the last few decades. Stocks of krill in Antarctica have declined dramatically in recent years. This decline could threaten all species which feed on krill. But when we move on to the northern hemisphere, degradation of cryosphere components such as Arctic sea ice and permafrost may pose a threat to the Earth's climate system. What is a permafrost? Permafrost is the permanently frozen ground that covers around 24% of the exposed landmass of the northern hemisphere. Permafrost is the hidden cryosphere. It's the permanently frozen soil that surrounds the Arctic all across Alaska, northern Canada, and then across Eurasia. The ground has been frozen during the ice ages. 
During ice ages, there was no enough slow fall in the dry regions of Alaska and Canada to form glaciers there and land was suitable for vegetation. What happened is that over thousands and thousands of years, all of that plant material got compacted and frozen every winter and buried and pushed down. So that today, there's 300 feet deep of frozen water and dead plants and some pieces of dead animals too. Sometimes you find woolly mammoths <laughs> in the permafrost. But most of it, of the organic matter as we call it in the permafrost, is um, frozen plant material. Some of that plant material is now thawing and decaying, releasing its ancient carbon into the atmosphere, sometimes in the form of methane gas bubbling out of expanding northern lakes. Another way to understand the permafrost is to take a walk below ground with Matthew Stern and into the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permafrost tunnel. And they've dug this, this tunnel back into the side of a hill about 200 feet and it goes sort of sloping down so that by the end of the tunnel you're about 100 feet underground and you're surrounded by bones sticking out of the wall from the steppe bison and the mastodons that are frozen in it. There's sticks that are 40,000 years old, you know, that you can touch with your hand. There's grass that's still green that's tens of thousands of years old because it got frozen, you know, right away and it's never lost the, the, the green color. Currently, we, we think that there is something on the order of two to three times as much carbon locked up as frozen organic matter in permafrost as there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So releasing all of that organic carbon from permafrost into the atmosphere would be a real game changer. That would be a tremendous transformation of the planet's atmosphere. Now, the good news is that it would take a very, very long time for that to happen. However, we are warming the planet uh, at a rate now that calls into question how quickly is that uh, changing and what the consequences uh, in the near future and in the far future are going to be.